It's good everybody, hope you're doing well. Today we're gonna continue on with our car photography. Have the vehicle be a blind right here parked up along the marshes. And I kinda wanna discuss as well uh, some reasons why we should keep our photography simple and also a few tips that hopefully you guys can come away with as to why you maybe shouldn't always plan your outing. We're getting some rain coming in, uh, starting to sprinkle, so that's kind of exciting. And there is a blue heron right now that is attempting to get a fish. You can always tell that they're uh, getting ready to uh, hunt the, the, the blue herons and also the white egrets because their, uh, their necks, their tall, thin necks, will start to sway back and forth like that. Their necks get, just become really erect and straight. And then they'll just uh, pivot their, their neck straight downward. And then they'll start swerving their neck really slowly. And that is a sign that get your camera ready because they're about to get a fish. Yeah, he's getting ready to get a fish. love watching them gracefully hunt. Hey, got them a fish, got them some dinner. <laughs> but the first uh, lesson that I kind of want to go over uh, as to why you probably don't want to always plan your outings and plan your trip. Definitely don't get me wrong. There is a place to plan. There is a definitely a need to plan your outings, especially if you're trying to learn about a specific species and learn more and more about its habitat and its mating, the times of seasons that uh, it's around that location, the weather patterns. Those are things that I continuously always hone my craft in and plan. However, that doesn't always mean that it's the best approach to take in photography. Let me explain. Now, I don't plan Plan my trips for the most part. I don't plan and if I did plan I probably could get better photographs if I did plan my outings. However, most of the time I just don't. Kind of like planning a vacation. Never works out uh, to the plan according to plan. Anything can derail our planning for photography. It doesn't really allow us to slow down and take all in the location that you're currently at. When well, here comes a white egret really quick. Let me get him. Here comes the rain. <laughs> Another thing about planning your trips is that it sets our expectations way too high that it becomes difficult to capture a photo. We really want our photos to come naturally and organically. And if we put too much pressure on us and we keep that weight on our shoulders with all the high expectations, generally, if we even get a shot, generally we're not happy with it or it's just not up to par, up to our own standards. Really, we should try to let go of those high expectations, guys, because we're going to fail miserably time and time again. Sometimes we're gonna come away with no good shots. We'll be out here in the field for hours upon hours. Maybe even if we plan it, it'll be days even, and we just don't get the photograph or that we're wanting. You want to try to get easier shots and you want to 
uh, be hap more happier with your shots. Break that habit of having high, extremely high expectations on the field. So the next one I really want to get into kind of piggybacks off that and that it really kind of burns us out physically and mentally uh, if we continuously plan our outings every single time. I guess what I'm just trying to say is don't worry so much about your expectations out here and just have fun. I'm missing all the action out here. I'm jibber jabbering. <laughs> So the blue herring keeps scaring off the white egret and then a comorant also comes around and uh, scares off the white egret and the blue heron all at the same time. It's kind of funny. weather is not always going to cooperate and the weather not cooperating allows for the wildlife to not cooperate. There's something about wildlife photography that is so different from every other niche of photography. Wildlife photography, you pretty much have zero control over the weather, even though you can kind of plan around that, uh, or the lighting, um, or even your subject. So it's very important to not keep those expectations so high. I wish we could get an eagle flying. I always want an eagle come in the, right here and, then, and we do have a lot of eagles and hawks and birds of prey here along the lake shore generally right where the location that i do my photography here uh between sandusky ohio and oregon ohio right along the ottawa national wildlife refuge mcgee marsh it's just wonderful to see a species that was on the endangered species list for so long just kind of make a comeback. I really encourage you guys to go out and be spontaneous, especially in your local areas that you might feel are boring or not exciting uh, or not picture worthy. Or we just feel that it's not photogenic because of all the locations and all the different types of wildlife and trips that we see all over Instagram and all over social media. Utilize your vehicle here as a blind uh, when possible uh, because it's so fun and it's so discreet and it's not as intrusive. Being spontaneous out here in the field with little to no expectations, when those moments happen that we get amazing results, it's just that much more fun. And it really makes for a great fun experience out here. the frogs again. <laughs> you always don't have to be inside the vehicle to do car wildlife photography. <laughs> the rain's coming down pretty good. coming down a little bit harder we're getting the storm rolling in so we're gonna head back in the driver's seat and finish up the video keeping it simple keeping your gear simple and keeping your photography simple and your style simple and your workflow simple just brings out so much more joy and happiness in this craft. Keep your focus not just on a single subject or on lighting or on composition, 
but just the overall experience. Using a narrow depth of field, removing distractions and other uh, elements uh, out of the frame, all these important things that we ought to strive to learn. Just telling a story is more important than just getting a snapshot. Getting away from all the crazy hustle and bustle and craziness of life and coming out here for the experience, whether you're doing nature, wildlife, macro photography. But if we stray away from the basic understanding and the basic foundation of photography, why you do it? Why do you take your camera out in the first place? Then it's all meaningless. It's all meaningless. <laughs> There's this red-winged blackbird again that keeps tormenting this white egret. They don't, they don't like each other, I'll tell you. It's like there are arch enemies out here in the field, in the wild. I'll tell you what, car photography, doing this out of your window is very beneficial as well. Not just if you're just short on time and you don't have a couple hours to dedicate to going out into the far back country or something like that, but also more importantly to individuals who are just getting up in age and have physical ailments or just have a physical disability that they just can't go on those hikes. You can still get great shots and still have fun and experience nature and wildlife photography from the comfort of your own vehicle. If you're just in a small town America, you're just in a small town wherever you're at around the world, and there is so many good photogenic places, photogenic species, and pieces of nature that are right underneath our fingertips, that are right underneath our feet, that we just neglect, that we just walk by. And yes, it might seem boring, but there's beauty in that. There's still beautiful images to be captured in the normal. A lot of the times the normal species that we see, we can capture unique moments in flight or in unique moments mating or unique moments uh, fighting or unique moments feeding. There's just so, or sleeping or getting up in the, like there's so many unique perspectives in nature and wildlife photography that we just normally take for granted and we push off as boring, we push off as just not fun to shoot. And I'm here to tell you that don't listen to that law. Keep your photography simple and I promise you, you will have so much joy out in the field. Now, unless you're like me and the wildlife just laughs at you while you're out here, you'll still come away with some good shots regardless. Because remember, art is subjective Photography is art. And I'm not a professional and I don't wanna be a professional. I, I was thinking about this before and I had a discussion about it and why you might not wanna be a professional and why you might just wanna be a hobbyist. And I started thinking, you know, why I started. What was the reason behind why I picked up a camera? And it's mainly because of the escape that it does for us you know, away from the chaos of life. And I was, you know, I was deployed in the military and I use photography as an escape, as a way to cope and uh, heal with depression, anxiety, and uh, all that stuff. And I know each person's different, but I think each of us have a unique story and a unique experience with photography, with nature and wildlife photography, street photography, any, any, any type of photography. There's something inside of us. There's something inside of us that wanted us to start in the first place. It wasn't for money. And if your goal, your end goal is to make money, that's cool. But there's just so, there's, there's a big distinction between a professional who wants to make money and is in it only for the money versus a hobbyist that does it for the pure joy of being out in nature, creating art, creating something out of nothing is the basic foundation of why you should slow down and three reasons why you really don't want to always plan your trips. It was a little bit better conditions to where I can go on a hike, but um, my health is not great today. So I figured I would just kind of stay in the vehicle. Also guys, I also picked up the Canon RF 100 millimeter uh, 2.8 macro lens right here. And uh, yeah, I wanted to run it through its paces, uh, do some macro photography, flower photography and stuff like that, and put it through its paces here on the channel and as well as maybe some street photography. I always wait for eagles. It's always every time I want an eagle, it's always on the hikes. Never when I'm stationary somewhere. 
There it goes. Yeah, I got him. Look at that. So let me know down in the comments below, guys, any other tips that you guys might have about not planning your photography or planning your photography. Would love to hear about them in your adventures. Remember, there's no such thing as a bad photograph, only a missed opportunity. So get outdoors and enjoy that opportunity that is in front of you with your cameras. God bless, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.